nothing without you without you you are the air that I breathe can't live without you without you you are living and moving in my breath nothing without you nothing without you 
know, the first time I heard who Apostle say that God is all he had, I was worried. How can he say that? I was worried. How does he say that when he has his wife and his kids? But later when I grew in the Lord, I understood that all we have is because of God. We are standing today because there is a God who governs over our lives. When we call, he answers. When we call, he says, yes, daughter, I am here. Yes, my son, I am here. So today, I need you to sing with an understanding that God is all that we have. In him, we live and we move and we have our being. Hallelujah. Sing knowing that he is the one who agrees. When he's not said yes, nothing in your life happens. Amen. Say, Hosanna, 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 you are the air that I breathe, hallelujah, hallelujah, you are live and move. of God says that in all circumstances give thanks unto the Lord in everything that happens give thanks unto Jehovah it's not easy to say thank you God when you have no food at home but it is a command of heaven that we should give thanks in every circumstance today we want to say thank you Jesus we want to say thank you for everything that is happening in our lives whether it is in our it is in our favor or not but the word says that all things work together for good to them that love the lord someone give thanks to jesus this morning someone give thanks to jesus though it doesn't make sense father we thank you we love you jesus we thank you my god because you are our god we thank you because we know that we can always love to you and we are saved we thank you because we know that you are the solution to every single one of our problems. Thank you, Jehovah. My victory is in your blood. My confidence is in your name. Yes. You took the shame so I could shine. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All that you did without a prize. Hey. My victory is in your name. My confidence is in your name. You took the shame so I could shine. All that you did without a prize.
We bless you, Lord, this morning in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, then, divine greetings to everyone in this place. In the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Can I have a better amen in this place? You can do better than that. You can do better than that. You can do better than that. I can't hear you. I can't hear. Give an ever high five if you can. And just say to them, welcome to August 2024. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This is our month of writing on the wings of the Spirit. Hallelujah. It is our month of writing on the wings of the Spirit. According to Acts, according to Acts chapter 8, verse 39 to verse 40. Hallelujah. Philip was carried by the Spirit of the Lord. And the Bible says he was found at Azotas. Hallelujah. You have been ordinary for too long. You have stayed at the same place for too long. You have experienced the same move of God in your life for too long. It's time for change. Hallelujah. Give another high five and say it's time for a shift. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. These are the days to ride on the wings of the spirit. These are the days of acceleration. These are the days to move at the speed of rapture. 
these are the days to move at the speed of light. In the name of Jesus, these are your days to fly in the measures of the Spirit. These are the days for you to live in the supernatural. These are the days for you to be visited by the Spirit of God. Days of ignorance are over. Days of being slow are over. Days of being delayed are over. Days of breakdown at the point of a breakthrough are over. These are the days to break through. Hallelujah. These are the days to get to your destination. These are the days that you make a plan and you make it. These are the days for you to begin to fly. Days of walking are over. You rather run. Days of sitting down are over. You rather move. In the name of Jesus. Can I prophesy to somebody? In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You have stepped in the days where you are beginning to become greater. Your days of smallness are over. You will not die smaller. You will not die an entity but you will die an institution in the name of Jesus Christ because of the spirit of the Lord you are unstoppable because of the spirit of the Lord you cannot be limited. By God you jump over the wall. By God you run through a trooper. If you hear me say yes, 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 yes. Ah, oh, hallelujah. Ah, oh, Ramandika Tayala Bahase, Reketala Lamando Koya Hasia Kata, Ala Laba Riando Koya Haria Kata. I hear this way, this song in the spirit that say, Eh, Atulam, Hallelujah. Yes, I will stay in your presence because it is the month. Hallelujah. Of writing on the wings of the Spirit. Your prayer life is being resuscitated again. Ayamaya. Your ministry of the Word is being taken to another level again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Put your hands together for Jesus. We take our seats. Ilamaya kata. On the wings of the Spirit. Oh, allow me to greet those who are joining us online this morning in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to World Word International. We welcome you in the name of Jesus, wherever you're watching us from, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Just type the name of that place. And in front of it, just say, on the wings of the Spirit. Hallelujah. August 20, 24. The God will bless you. Things are going to happen supernaturally in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, how I love you. Lift your hands in the presence of the Lord. Oh, Yabadi Akata. Oh, Mayandi Kata Yabari Akata. Rabba Baba Ba. Oyandi Mandi Akata Yamahari Akata Lalaba. Relelebe shalandi mai kata limando koyehe riakata laba. Oh Lord, we bless you this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, we bless your name. Mighty God, high and lifted up. Seated on the throne. Oh Shiba diaka. Mayando kotelelebe riakata laba. Ramando koyehe riakata laba. Rala laba ba ya kote kayahase. My underkote. Oh, Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we love you. Lord, we adore you. Oh, Lord, body yakata. Rala la ba 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 yakota. Oh, le le be riakata yabade mahasi. Oh, shala dimande kaya hasi yakata. Rokoto le le bende kaya ha. We bless you, Lord, today. In the name of Jesus Christ, we adore you this morning. In Jesus' name. In your secret place, we will stay, we will stay. We are reading the word of the Lord from Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 6 to 8. Uh, allow me this Sunday and this coming week to conclude on financial 
Hallelujah. Fortunes. Then we ride on the wings of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Once more again, this morning I came with a special message uh, for someone. And the message says, you have stayed too long on this mountain. Hallelujah. You have stayed too long on this mountain. Let's go. My reader, Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 6 to 8. Can I have it in King James Version and in the Message Bible? We get into the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter number one, verse number 15. Verse number six and to eight. Verse number six to eight. Yes, sir. The Lord our God spoke unto us in Horeb, saying, You have dwelt long enough in this mountain. Turn you and take your journey and go to the mount of the Amorites, and unto all the places nigh there unto, in the plain, in the hills, and in the vale, and in the south, and by the seaside, to the land of the Canaanites, and unto Lebanon, unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Verse number eight. Behold, I have set the land before you. Mm. Go in mm. and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, mm. to give unto them and to their seed after them. Hallelujah. We take it in uh, just two verse 6 and verse 8 in uh, Message Bible. Verse number 6 in Message. Yes. Back at Horeb, God, our God, Mm. spoke to us mm. you have stayed long enough at this mountain mm. verse number 8 look I have given you this land mm. now go in and mm. take it mm. it's the land God promised to give your ancestors Abraham Isaac and Jacob and their children after them Father, we thank you for the reading of your word this morning. We pray, give us understanding according to your word. Change and transform our lives in the power of your word. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. We welcome all the leaders in the church. We welcome uh, the elders. We welcome the pastors. We welcome the ministers. We welcome our mother. She's in the house. In the name of Jesus Christ, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. We welcome all the ladies from the... Uh, retreat, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus Christ. They made us to work over time, but we are here this morning, hallelujah, in Jesus' name. It was wonderful. If you are sitting next to a lady, just ask them, were you at the retreat? Just look at them in the face if they say no and say, How, are you serious with your life? Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. We might be tired, but we are here in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So I'm, 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 I'm trying to save my voice. Hallelujah. They, they made me preach for two hours, 30 minutes there at the retreat. They, without a mic. <laughs> Hallelujah. I really need God. Please get you lay me hands when you are there so that I minister today. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you. God gave the children of Israel an instruction. Hallelujah. You leave the land of Egypt. You are going to Canaan. They get at Horeb and they camp there. Until God says, your stay in this place is no longer welcome. You have overstayed your welcome in this place. God says to them, you have to break camp. You better, you better move to another mountain. You better move into the valley. At least there must be a movement. At least there must be progress. Hallelujah. Because the land... 
that I promised you, my promise over your life, that what the prophetic word came and said to you is still ahead of you. It's not where you are. It's not behind you. It's ahead of you. Therefore, break camp. Hallelujah. Give your neighbor a high five and say, break camp. It is normal when you are on a long journey to take a break and camp. You do that to rest. You do that to refocus. You do that to re-energize. But then it becomes a problem when your camp becomes your permanent residence. Hallelujah. That's why it is called a camp. A camp is normally made of tents. And it is abnormal to make a tent your permanent residence. The word of the Lord comes to them and says, you have stayed here for too long. Usually when you are on a journey, a camp is a place, one, hallelujah, of convenience. You have found a place where you can conveniently rest. It is not your destination. Hallelujah. They came to Horeb. This was not Canaan. They left Egypt for Canaan, but they then came. Hallelujah. At a place they were never supposed to stay for too long. Tell your neighbor, if in your life, can testify you have stayed there for too long. I have a question for somebody today. Where are you? Are you still in the camp or you are already at your destination? There are some people, they had brilliant dreams when they were growing up. They could picture themselves and see themselves far away. I have a question, where are you? Hallelujah. It was a detour. Why well, is you are planning your life? But somebody, the moment they were paid $105, they said, I'm going nowhere. This is where I'm staying. My brother, that was a camp. What happened to that brilliant person you used to think about? What happened about that great woman? Those great dreams that you used to have. You got to Horeb. Can I tell you, at, at camp, you got a, a, a place of convenience. It's convenient, but it's not the place. Usually, it's convenient, but it doesn't have comfort. Now that you are doing temporal teaching, now you are putting on a tie, now you are polishing shoes, now your dream of being a doctor is thrown outside the window. Give your neighbor and say, are you not doing temporal? Please, there's nothing wrong with temporal teaching. But I'm saying it was supposed to prepare you to go for college. Oh, Lord in the heaven, I know somebody found themselves there. Hallelujah. I have another question for somebody. Was the, is this Canaan? Check with somebody. Is this Canaan? Is this Canaan? Check, check with your neighbor and say, is, he cannot love, is this Canaan, is this the, the land that is flowing with milk and honey? Is this your Canaan in ministry? Is this your Canaan in your... So I, I, 
Check with them and say, how old are you now? Check with them, check with them, check with them, check with them. That, do you know they are children who left Canaan at one month? They are still at Horeb now, they are 40 years. They are at Horeb 40 years. How many of you know that the distance from Canaan to, sorry, from Egypt to Canaan was 11 days? It was 11 days. But some people, 40 years, they are going, the, the, they were going around the same mountain. In their mind, they thought they are progressing. Don't you see that the tree you are seeing this week is the one you saw last month, which means there's something wrong. You are going in circles. Today I break every circle that has kept you going around in life. It's high time you break camp. It's high time you break camp. Some of you had brilliant dreams, even with the Lord. What happened to those with that dream of being a man of God? What happened to that dream of being a woman of God? What happened to that dream of being a, a man who will be raising, the, uh, healing the sick in hospitals, praying, raising the dead? What happened to that? Now we are just an ordinary church brother. I refuse that in the name of Jesus. I have come to inject you today to make a move. Hallelujah. Why did you give up on your original dream? Hallelujah. And now you are in the wrong place and you are comfortable. It's just a camp. It's a place of convenience. It's not your destination. Give your high five and every high five and say, a place of convenience is not your destination. That's why you find restrooms are called places of. But if you see yourself sleeping in the restroom, having your lunch in the restroom, it means there is a serious problem in your mind. Give somebody a high five and say, my sister, you rather do something. You rather, you rather prepare to do something. You have been on this mountain. It's too long too long. Someone, some of you, you could have been celebrated by now, but they are still waiting for your arrival. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Have, you ever, have you ever gone to watch Marathon? Hallelujah. You'll be waiting. That Uza Tut. Uza Tut. Uza Tut. Until you send a car or an ambulance. The brother is not coming. And then you discover that no, he's not even injured. He's not even dead. He's seated under a tree. Because while he was running, he saw a place of convenience and he sat under a tree. My sister, your salary is a place of convenience. My Allah, my Akacha. It's a high time you say enough is enough. I'm breaking off camp. I am a Yakata. You are supposed to be moving forward. You are, what happened to that PhD that you wanted to do? You started speaking in tongues and you forgot about books. I'm here to say to you, tongues were a place of convenience. What happened to your declaration that I'm going to work hard? And become so successful that my mother-in-law will put my picture as a screensaver on her phone. What happened to that dream? What happened to that dream? Give your neighbor a high five. And say it's time to take off again. It's time to take off again. Your mother-in-law is waiting. Look at your neighbor and say, oh, dream again. You are never too late to take off your dream. Hallelujah. You are never too, long, too late to start again. 
You are never too late. Some people after 60, 70 something years, they started businesses. When up to now, you are giving excuse. What you are is cutting up. Wherever you are, it's your season. Sarai had a child at 90 years. Your dream must live again. There are some dangerous places to camp at. And now I'm going to give you this. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 11, verse 31 and 32. Some of the things that have delayed you, denied you, is because you camped at a wrong place, but it was a place of convenience. And you started getting married there and having children. But when we left Egypt, we said we are going to Canaan. So is this your Canaan? Hallelujah. What happened to that Canaan that I saw on your profile picture? Let's go. Genesis chapter 11, verse 31 and 32, quickly. Genesis 11, verse 31. And Terah took Abram, his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, yeah, his son Abram's wife. Mm. And they went forth with them unto U of the Chaldees mm. to go into the land of Canaan. Mm. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. Mm. And the days of Terah were 205 years. Mm. And Terah died in Haran. Did you hear that? Terra is in this land called the, the, the land of you. And it comes to him that you must go to Canaan. The Bible says, can I give you the, the name Terra means delay. Go, go research it. It means delay. It means failure. Hallelujah. May God change your name this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. So he leaves for Canaan. He gets to Haran. The Bible says he dwelled there. This, understand this. Understand this because I'll dwell here a few minutes. Haran reminded Terah of something. If you read a few verses before, you discover that his son, who was called Haran, died. So he gets to a city called Haran. He remembered his son. So Haran was his place of pain. It was a wrong place to camp at. But Terra failed, failed that, uh, you know, if I leave this place, the memories of his son. Give the Terra next to you and say, the son is dead, brah. And that the, the son is not even here. It's only names that are similar. But when he arrived at the city, he saw a, a banner that says, welcome to Haran. And something was triggered in his spirit. And he said, ah, Kenan, I'm no longer coming there. Some of you, you are camping at your Haran. People love to associate with their pain. Mm -hmm. I'm going somewhere, I'm going somewhere, I'm going somewhere, I'm going somewhere, I'm going somewhere. Don't camp at your place of pain. That's the, that kind of a place is a destined killer. You are supposed to be in Canaan, but pain holds you back. There are people who cannot progress because they were hurt. Ah, lapa nyatuela, lapa nyatuela. Nyatuela la. Haran is a dream killer. You used to dream so big. 
big and so great until you got to a place of familiarity. And what happens there, many people camp where they have been hurt. Can I tell you the truth? It is true that Haran died. It's true that you were hurt. But what it does, it drives you to unforgiveness. I don't know, the Bible doesn't tell us how Haran died or what happened. But I think Terah felt like, you know what? I could have done something to save my son. So the best I can do is to stay in a city called the Haran. When you are hurt, when there is pain, don't camp there. Wisdom is to move towards the mark of your high calling. God accepted that you are angry about something. But he doesn't accept when you camp there. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26. Oh, yeah, Baika. Please run. It's, it's, it's first service. Ephesians 4, verse number 26. Yes. Be ye angry uh. and sin not. Uh. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Anyone who can develop the Bible. So, God accepts it that you will face pain and you become angry angry. God is, he has no problem with that. I'm not saying you go demonstrating anger. Every, I'm saying when you are, when your heart is broken, when difficult things come your way, when pain comes your way, the Bible says be angry but sin not. So in other words, there is a level of anger that is not sin. It's just an emotional reaction. To something. But now when you dwell on that anger. Until the sun set. It is now being translated to sinning. Now can I ask somebody that is here. Okay. The Bible says. Uh, don't allow the sun to go down on your anger. Okay. I'll dwell there a bit. So. How many, how many days you have gone down in that anger? How many years you have gone down in that anger? Ah, listen to me. Okay. <laughs> God knows that things might come our way and cause us to react in a certain way. And some of those things are not avoidable because there are too many foolish people on earth. So because of them, they will step on you in a certain day. But God says you are not allowed to go to sleep without resolving the matter. There are some sisters here, they can be on mute for two months. Just because the brother who married them did not come with lacto on Thursday. So for two months they are on mute camping at Haran. It makes them feel okay hey, that they are angry. According to God, you are supposed to be angry for some minutes or hours. You are supposed to come back to your senses quicker. You not even want to, you, you, I mean, uh, 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 uh. let me tell you what happens. Anger is dangerous. Hallelujah. Anger will harm you. So God knows it's poison. So he says, be angry, but don't sin. Don't allow your anger to go into the night. When now you are so angry, you are, you are bitter. You are salty. 
in the inside of you. So what happens is that God will allow you to be angry to a certain degree. But time-wise, you're supposed to know that I'm supposed to come back to my senses and go back to my journey. Many people, they, they are no longer in their journey or walk with God because they have harbored evil things in their spirits. And then God has told me to tell you this day that you have stayed too long in that place. Break camp. Break that cycle. And continue with your life. If you don't know, hey, let me tell you, there is nothing as difficult as forgiveness. This thing can be new. This person he had you is true. They betrayed you. It's very true. Even heaven has a record of that. And you feel it in your heart. How many, how many forgiven people here? Allow it. God has power. When we talk about forgiveness, it's not you. Just going before God and say, Ah, God, I forgive everyone who has transgressed against me from this day. God, I forgive them in advance. Ah, uh, you have not done anything, my brother. That's shock. Real places where you were hurt, it's like a haram. You can even say it in your heart that I can forgive every, everything else, but this nonsense I will not forgive. And now you camp on that place. And you are not going anywhere. What you don't know is that the devil knows that if he is to come to you, there must be a door that is opened. If there is no door that is opened, he cannot come to you. So he has to call somebody to step on your toes. So that through anchor, you then open a door for demons to come in and he start to attack your life. Can I give you an example? I went through a situation and I told myself I can forgive this one, this one, this one, but this one I will not forgive. I went with it for some time and uh, a revelation of forgiveness came to me and I went before God and said, God, I have forgiven are forgiven, Lord, I have, I have forgiven. Then uh, it so happened that uh, because your forgiveness will be tested. And do not do not do with that person. Where you cannot avoid each other. That's when you know you have not forgiven at all. You were just thinking about forgiveness. Hallelujah. So, in, in, in that walk, there's something that happened to me. Let me talk to you this very day. Hallelujah. I realized that my heaven was closed. Literally closed. I'll say God, nothing. I'll pray, nothing. I'll read the Bible, nothing. My heaven will only open when I'm preaching to people. But nothing happened. So I had a dream. In that dream, I was carrying a paper bag that I was given by somebody, but I didn't check what was inside the paper bag, but I was just carrying a paper bag. So it got to a point when, when, people, when people are approaching me, they divert like this. Ha! I looked at my paper bag. I realized that there were flies. You know the green flies? They will be outside the paper bag. You shake them. And begin to walk. Until somebody said to me, what's inside your paper bag? Open my paper bag. I found, you know, it says, because your unforgiveness in apagat is not outside. So I'm, I'm walking with that. 
this person says, throw this thing away. I said, no. No, not this. No. Have you ever been so hurt? Have you ever been so hurt that you can't even explain how painful it is? You are broken into so many tiny pieces at the same time. So one day, I went to my mother's house. My mother, she's my intercessor. She says to me, Judge, most of the times I used to pray and I'll see you with the angels. But these days when I pray, I'm not seeing you with the angels. What's going on? I just brushed it because I knew what she was talking about. I brushed it and changed the, sec- the, the discussion. Let me tell you, you know why you are praying and you're not being answered. You have closed. You have remained at the wrong place. You have camped at the place of unforgiveness. When you started there, God had no problem because he thought you, was, you were angry. But you are continuing with it. Do you understand that now it has closed your heaven? God is worried when we continue in the wrong thing over time. Some of you, your heaven are closed because there is that sin that you don't want to leave. You know, but you are carrying them. And at the same time, you want heaven to open and angels to come your way. I'm telling you my personal testimony. Heaven closed over my life, totally shut. Do you mean that this grudge you have with somebody is worth you losing the treasures of heaven just for you to keep it? How is it paying back in your life? Don't you know the Bible says when we forgive those who have trespassed against us, we are putting coal of fire over their heads. Ah. A lot of people, let me tell you, you can preach about forgiveness, but doing it is hard. Especially when you have been stepped right on that toe that was injured. There are people you no longer enjoy God in church because there are some people who gossiped about you. And one of them was your best friend. And now you feel it is better that I stay with the Haran who is dead instead of moving over to Canaan until you die. But I come with the word of the Lord that says break the camp. Hallelujah. Ah, my God. God, the land and the possessions, they are still ahead of you. There is something that God wants to do with your life, but it cannot be done when you are in Haran. But for you to get to Canaan, you are supposed to let go of the things of Haran. But because you had pain, you rather camp there. And even when people ask you, now you have an explanation. I now have depression because of my husband. If it wasn't for him, I would not be depressed. (sighs) Who, Who am I speaking to? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The devil has... Many children of God caught up in these anger issues, resentment. There's something that is called chronic unforgiveness. Let me tell you, unforgiveness is so subtle. You you, you can't pick it up. It makes you feel like, you know, they know what they did. Yes, they do. But then God says they don't know what they are doing. They know what they are doing, but they don't know what they are doing. If they knew, they would not have touched you. But they don't. That's why they touched you. And then God says, you forgive them. For the sake of your Kenani. Hey! For the sake of Kenani. You break camp. You break the, the circles of pain. You break 
that circles Ele Mayakata of unforgiveness and say, Oh Lord, I want you to cleanse me from all this. I'm moving up with my life. I am chasing my dream. I will not be stopped of being a great man because of small people. Because usually, when you see someone coming to crush you, he's a small person. He's a small person. It's you who's actually treating them as big, but they're a small person. And when the Bible says they don't know what they're doing, it means that they are crazy. They are mad by a shanya. How many of you have ever met a crazy man in the street and it becomes an issue that they, were, they, were, they threw a stone at you? And now you can't even go home. If it wasn't for that crazy man who threw a stone at me, I would be doing well. But can't you see that they are crazy? Let's take these scriptures in the next five minutes, then we close. I think I'll continue with this someday. Let me tell you, don't camp at the wrong place. Some people, they camp at failure. Failure was supposed to be a place where you learn and you re-energize and you re-strategize and you take off again. But you are always there. Even after the Bible told you, a, told you a, 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 a righteous man can fall seven times, you, you're still there. And everyone comes out, no, I failed. No, I failed. We, which year was that? John chapter 20, verse 21 to 23. Quickly, please. I have five minutes. Quickly, please. Quickly, quickly. Let, let, let's finish this. Let me, let me ask somebody. Can you genuinely, truly say you, you're forgiven that situation? You're forgiven that person? I'm talking to you. What is it that is limiting you? Pain. They cause pain. Yes, it's true. There are people today who cannot move forward because a certain brother was crazy enough to say they no longer want you in their life. So sitting is simple. I look to the phone. Let me tell you, it's not your loss, it's their loss. So stand up and become the person that the Lord created you to become. Stand up and pick up your gift and begin to excel in life. Hallelujah. Stand up and smile again. Stand up and put makeup if you are a woman. If you are a man, stand up and go to the gym and put on a bit of this and that. Do something about your life. Don't spend... Ah, there are some people who commit suicide. Is that because somebody has said, I no longer want you in your life. Why? Why value certain people so high? You are dying for a person. I almost said something. But I remember I was asked a question somewhere. Let me not say it. I want to, so, you want to kill yourself? For a person? I was alone, alone, I was alone, I was in family. That time I said, who 20 something years and now you want to hang yourself? Ah! Oh. Break camp, break that cycle, break that thing in the name of Jesus. Go delete all his photos, burn them. You see, that's why me, I don't have a problem to disassociate you with the wrong people. Because one thing I tell, I tell myself, Satan's call, Anguas. Satan's call, Anguas. Very many are so much of Obula. I'm going to put something on sevens, not a band. I came here to look for work. I left the rural area and my parents said, Liuye Sevens are with the town. I came here to make money. I didn't come here to look for people. If you cannot walk my path, we, ask, we separate nicely. Ay, 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 ay. So when you spend the whole month, you are putting on the face of a monkey because this brother who is actually a monkey decided not to be in your life. Because the Bible says they don't know what they are doing. Hey. Hey. 
Now you no longer if you want to go to heaven. You now no longer if you want to bat. You now no longer want to do anything. I say to you, get out of that stupidity. Get out of that camp. Break that camp. Get out of Haran. Get out of that mountain. In the name of Jesus. Look at your neighbor. And say, I'm going there. No. Hey, I'm going. Hey, I'm going. No. You have got to go to your destination. You are supposed to make it in the Lord. Stop these crutches. Stop this unforgiveness stuff. Stop these anger issues. There's somewhere you are supposed to go. There's somewhere you are supposed to migrate to. I'm tired of being at the same place. Forgive these monkeys. They don't know what they are doing. Read. John 20 from verse 20. 21. 21. Then oh. Jesus said to them again, Peace be unto you. As my father has sent me, hey. even so send I you. Hey. Did, did you hear that? As my father has sent me, so I sent you also. Let's hear the story. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive you the Holy Ghost. Hey. Who, yes, go. Whosoever sins. Hey. You remit or forgive. Yes. They are remitted or forgiven unto them. Yes. And whosoever sins. Yes. You retain or yes. are not forgive. Yes. They are not forgiven. Did you hear that? Jesus says to his disciples, oh, I breathe unto you the Holy Ghost as, as my father sent me, I sent you. But you will be in the business of forgiving sins. Because there are monkeys on the way. He says, who sins, you release. I like it my version. The sins you release, they are released. But the ones you handle, uphold, they are held. Who holds them? It's you. You are like me with the paper bag with Ezanga Pagates Bolile. You are holding their sins. So you then wonder why you are sick. You then wonder why you are praying and God is not answering. Hallelujah. There are things that you are holding on. And I hear God say today, what is in your hands? Why holding people's sins? It's your business to remit them. It's your business to let them go. To not, today I'm not leaving this place until somebody, there's one person I came here for. You're supposed to leave that thing. If you cry, cry, but break that thing. Let it go in the name of Jesus. Because your calling, your destiny, your life assignment is too bigger than these smallish things that have kept you not going. Right now, even money is running away from you. Because huh. If you read, now I'm not, can I, can I just, can I just summarize? If you read 23, Luke 23, from verse 34, Jesus, they are crucifying him. He says, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. You go to X7, you encounter Stephen, they are stoning him. Then the Bible says he lifted up his eyes. He saw the heavens opened and Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. And he turns around and says, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. You know my argument when I didn't want to forgive is that they have not come to ask for forgiveness. You, you're waiting for monkeys to come. They don't. Even Jesus no one came to say we are sorry for nailing you. No one came to Stephen and say we are sorry for stoning you. But he says forgive them. They are just but monkeys. Stand up. You have been on that camp of failure for too long. You have been on that camp of this. God was not angry. Do you know the when you start sinning, you, you sin and you realize that heaven is still open. But my sister, you're going to get at a point when heaven will shut. Ask others. 
Look at me and ask me, heaven shuts. To an extent that you even pray that say, God, just call my name. I just want to hear you say, judge. It's enough. I don't want a lot. It's because you have continued on something that is wrong. You have came to where you are supposed to pass through. Don't you know what the Bible says? Even though I walk through the valley of the... You don't stay in that. You don't stay. But when you have been there now, it's five years. You're still doing... And then you go back on Monday and say, Father, forgive me. <laughs> forgive me. Forgive me. Can I tell you? God is not foolish. He has sent me today to just say to you, you have been too long on that mountain. You have overstayed your welcome there. And your heaven is shut. This is why you struggle to read the Bible. You struggle. Even in Goma, see In Goma. When I walk to my father, so in Goma, I got Derek. Good to me, so in this way. Who says, what is Zulu? Say, Lila. Konu wa fai gas freedom sen wa iti zululi kaya lompe fum do wan. Ponti zululi kaya lompe fum do wan. Iu zuti zululi kon. Kates uya sabe u chant u bot ku value. Let me tell you, leave that place today. Say it in your heart. I am closing. I'm breaking this cycle. Who's here tonight, today who's saying, men of God, I've heard you. You came for me. It's me you are talking to. I must break from this system of camping where I was supposed to pass through. There are some people after today, they are angry about their parents. Something that happened when you were in secondary school. And you are still angry. I will never buy my mother a dress. My sister, you are camping at the wrong place. You are supposed to be heading to Canaan. Give your neighbor a high five and say, break him. Break the cycle. You can't continue. If you see yourself, you see the same uh, uh, pictures that you have seen, the same trees that you are, it means you are going round in a mountain. You needed to progress to Canaan. I, I, I wish you could turn around and, 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 and just talk to your neighbor and say, please forgive. Yeah, turn to your neighbor and just say, okay, I'm asking for forgiveness on behalf of the monkeys that didn't apologize to you. <laughs> Lift your hands. Ay, 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 ay. I feel the spirit of the Lord. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Who is here today who say, I know it's difficult, but I'm going to do this. And some of you who are here today, stop being a monkey, go and apologize. Where you know you did wrong, go there and say, I'm sorry. Humble yourself. For how long are you going to live in pride? And deprive yourself of the presence and the glory of God. Can you run here if you are that person? I want to pray with you. Who is saying, I'm going to forgive. I'm going to break camp. I'm going to leave this place. I do, it's not only forgiveness. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking so much on forgiveness because this is what closed my heaven. I don't know what is it that is closing your heaven. Because what I know is that as I was speaking, the Holy Spirit spoke to you. The Holy Spirit will always point you and say, you, this is what has closed your heaven. What is closing your heaven? You used to pray. Where now you used to see in the realm of the Spirit. Where now you used to move in the things of God. What has closed your heaven? Some of you is wrong association. Some of you is wrong friends. Some of you is wrong behavior. Some of you is keeping wrong things in your heart. You lift your hands. You lift your hands. You lift your hands higher. May God have mercy on you. 
Let me tell you, the heavens, as you are standing here, the heavens, something is breaking. Something is breaking in the realm of the spirit. Something is breaking. Something is breaking. Something, a cycle is breaking. You realize that from this day, when you pray, your prayer calls. When you read the word, revelation comes. When you are in the presence of the Lord, you sense God is here. Because you have broken free from certain things. That pulls you in Haran when you are supposed to be in Canaan. Lift your hands and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, sweep Holy Spirit, sweep over their lives. Ah, yeah, my, yeah. You know, Lord of oh God, this day, you know what some of them have been through. You know what they had to face in their lives. Elemaya Kaya. You know. But I pray this very day in the name of Jesus Christ. Break that cycle. Break that cycle. I break that cycle as they forgive. I break that cycle as they move on, as they break camp. I pray today in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Somebody, God is touching you right now. Yes, Lord. That's a release. That's a release. That's a release. That's a release in their lives. Yes, Lord. That's a release in their lives, in their spirit. That's a release in the name of Jesus. That's a release. God is touching someone. That's a release. God is touching your life. Ele Mayakata, as you, as you for. Give a shalaya Rebeda Kataya Mandekaya Jesus. Jesus came for you. Ah, yeah. Shabaya. Ah, Jesus. <laughs> 